Hey guys, so it's gonna be almost two weeks. Now it's called the Movement Control Order, MCO. It's no more RMO. It used to be Restricted Movement Order. I'm gonna go for a grocery run now. Running out of groceries. And I just bumped into these delivery guys who are delivering fresh seafood all the way from uh, Kuala Selengo. Uh, so they're actually taking orders online and they're delivering directly from Kuala Selengo, which is a, a fishing area. Apparently they are doing deliveries every day. I'll share the contact on the description as well. If you need fresh seafood, you can probably check them out. So just finished the grocery run. It wasn't so bad, uh, not as bad as the earlier trip and the crowd wasn't that big. I didn't see any panic buying. I guess people have already panic bought. I haven't been stocking up so much because I don't have that much space in the house anyway. So I kind of have to only buy what I need. I also don't support the whole panic buying and stocking up shit. That aside, I didn't see that many people panic buying today. Uh, the most important thing, toilet rolls, kitchen towels, so much of that. So we are not running out of that stock yet. I live in a neighborhood with a lot of Chinese people and a lot of expats. So if we still have toilet papers at the grocery store, I guess things are not so bad yet. We are definitely out of yeast. Uh, from what I heard from my friends, they just can't find yeast anywhere. So I hope the yeast stock comes back soon so that we can do some baking. It's so hard to get bread now. So definitely no bread, no Massimo bread, uh, no gardenia bread. I couldn't find any. So I had to buy some expensive bread from the bakery. That's all right, still bread, uh, good uh, whole meal bread. But I guess I have to start stocking the KK Mart and Speed Mart because I need to find out what time the bread lorry uh, arrives. I'll probably never be able to get any Massimo bread for the remainder of this MCO. And that's going to be bad because I can't be baking loaf bread every day. It's a movement control order. You know, people are still stupid. There's still a lot of people outside meeting up for, you know, whatever purposes. Dumbasses. People are still having parties. People are still meeting up with their friends. I'm sure there are a lot of people sneaking in and out of their friends' houses and their boyfriend, girlfriend houses. You guys are a bunch of idiots and you know it. And you probably think you will never get this virus, but so did all those people who died and all those people who are in ICU right now and all those doctors who are treating these patients and getting themselves infected. All these people never expected to get the virus. It's been two weeks now and two more weeks left for the MCO lockdown to end, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be extended way until end of the month. I know some of you think on the 15th of April, we're all out holding hands singing Kumbaya, but that's not gonna happen. I'm pretty sure it'll be extended uh, to control the outbreak. So be prepared mentally to be on lockdown until end of this month. And I also hope you have enough groceries at home. Anyway, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of uh, crowdfunding initiatives from individuals, people like you and me. And so many people are raising funds to help other people. And that's amazing. And I too did a small fundraiser, a private fundraiser to buy face shields. You know, those full face shields for frontliners. I'm sure many of you would have seen photos or videos of doctors cutting up sponges and using those uh, you know, A4 transparency films to, to make face shields. Yeah, that was a bit sad to see. Uh, although our government is rich, trust me, they are rich. They have all the resources, but I don't think uh, the healthcare system, our healthcare system was prepared to face something like this uh, for whatever COVID-19 has thrown at them. Uh, although we have equipment, we have uh, great doctors, we have great medical staff, but I think it was a bit too much. A lot of the hospitals, especially government hospitals are struggling. So I, I did a small fundraiser, a private fundraiser, just raised some uh, money from friends quickly to order some uh, face shields, factory made ones. Uh, so instead of the DIY face shields, I wanted to order some factory made proper ones that's in progress but I think with the new stimulus package that the Prime Minister just announced our government hospitals will be receiving their supply finally I think it's very important keeping the frontliners safe because if they go down everyone is in trouble my wife just went back to work uh, it's her rotation now so she's back in the hospital uh, helping the screening and stuff so I hope she's safe and her friends her co-workers everyone in the hospital so many of them involved everyone is equally exposed to the risk they are really sacrificing a lot not just themselves but their family and friends and people around them because if they go down it affects a lot of people so I hope the frontliners are really safe and I hope we can do as much as we can to support them. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives out there and people are supporting hospitals with PPE, face masks, shields and all that. Uh, so the government support aside uh, whatever we can do I think 
it'll be helpful. And that aside, I was actually more concerned about people who are now running out of money and running out of food. I like, you know on social media, I keep seeing all these people who are running out of food, uh, people who are eating plain porridge, people who have to go out and look for food scraps from uh, the rubbish bins nearby their houses. So that's really, really sad. The reality is we can't help everyone, but we can help some. We can help those who are closest to us. And although I live in a slightly affluent area in KL, uh, we have a lot of rich people in my neighborhood, but we also have some low-cost apartments and flats nearby. I mean, these are where the odd job workers, the restaurant workers, uh, the cleaners, pretty much, you know, people who work in this neighborhood, they live there. And uh, I was very sure some of them are in trouble. Some of them probably don't have income now since the lockdown. So I wanted to check with those closest to me first. So I messaged my uh, cleaning lady who cleans my office. And as expected, she and the husband don't have any income this month. Although my office is closed, I still paid her allowance, but I guess not everyone feels the same way. So if she doesn't work, she doesn't get paid, then there's no food on the table. So going through four weeks of lockdown is definitely going to be hard. Her neighbors and some of her friends are also in the same situation. Then I buzzed another friend, Ali, who's a chef. Uh, he lives nearby and his family immediately found a few more families that definitely need help. So I guess, you know, uh, I had to do something uh, and I'm sure many more families are in the same situation. I mean, there are a lot of people who work on daily pay, for example, like plumbers and uh, wiremen and mechanics. I mean, if they go out to work, they get paid for the day and that's how they put food on the table. They can't work for two weeks. I mean, you don't expect uh, people like that with very low income to have proper savings to you know take them through uh, one month of a lockdown. So I guess something needed to be done. Then uh, I invited a few more friends to join in and we came together and we decided to launch a crowdfunding campaign. So this crowdfunding campaign is purely to buy groceries for some underprivileged families who have lost their income mainly because of the lockdown. And I know we have the government, we have NGOs, we have so many other people who are helping, but I don't think they can reach everyone. The amount of people that need help now is definitely way bigger. It's not only about resources, I think it's also about the reach. A lot of these people who need help now, they are not even on the radar of these NGOs and all that because these are not people who have been getting help all this while. Uh, it's just that suddenly they're in trouble because of this lockdown, right? I believe it's very important for us to just help each other, especially in our own neighborhood. Instead of waiting for the government to help them or some NGO to help them, if we see someone who's going hungry, I think it'll be way better for us to immediately just help out ourselves uh, and if later the government comes in or some NGO comes in and they start taking over the work then it's amazing but till then someone has to do it so I think it's fine for us people like you and me to take initiatives to start our own campaigns or programs to help whoever that needs help so we decided to pursue with this initiative to help people in our neighborhood first if we manage to raise more money and we have more people joining the team we might expand the area and cover other areas so that we can support more families that will be a good problem to have later so for this crowdfunding campaign i didn't want to use my personal account and i wanted everything to be very transparent so i started looking for a proper crowdfunding platform and settled with pitchin so i know the founders of pitchin uh, cash and sam they're very good friends of mine uh, they've been amazing in the startup ecosystem and I believe they're more focused on raising funds for startups and businesses but you know the platform allows us to create crowdfunding campaigns for community projects because of that we decided to go with them I mean they're legit and they're licensed it took about two days for a campaign page to be verified and we went live and within one day we managed to raise about more than 7,000 ringgit out of the 10,000 target and last night after we hit the 50% mark we placed our first order for the grocery aid pack. We hope to start delivering by end of this week. So I think now we already have about 25 families we have identified and we've got the details. And it's really amazing how more than 100 people have backed this campaign so far. And if you have donated to the campaign, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't, please check it out. I'll share the link in the description. Uh, check out the crowdfunding page and hopefully you can help a lot of families out there. We're not a charity organization. This is purely an initiative by a group of individuals. So if you trust that we will do the right thing, do support our campaign. And thank you so much. Until I see you in the next video, bye-bye.